What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing an automatic transmission service on our 200 series. Alright, so all you guys out there that have got 200 series, um, if you actually look in the owner's manual, it says that you don't have to change the transmission oil, ever. Which, uh, as a mechanic, that sort of always got to me a bit, uh, thinking that something that would last the length of the uh, transmission, uh, especially with the amount of uh, hard work and effort that we put into these cars when we're towing, when we're four-wheel driving, uh, just everyday driving. I, I believe that you probably should change the transmission oil at least every 100,000 Ks. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, today I've, we've up to about 200,000 Ks in this car and I've done myself about 100,000 Ks of that and if anyone knows what the, the sort of stuff that we get up to, uh, it's been treated, not hard, but it's been treated fairly roughly sort of thing, how it's meant to be treated. Uh, we go fairly hard with our car, um, four-wheel driving, towing our van and just general use. So I believe it's time we uh, give her a bit of love and do a transmission service. So I'm just going to go through all the steps on how I do it. Um, I'm going to do a flush as well, so not just a service, but a flush. And just to make sure all that oil's gone, because all up it holds about 12 litres of uh, engine oil, uh, engine oil, 12 litres of transmission oil. So we've got to get rid of all that through the lines, through the torque converter, all that sort of stuff. So stay with us and we'll get onto that. All right, so the oil I'm going to be using today is this uh, Nulon low viscosity multi-vehicle automatic transmission fluid. Now there's so many different fluids out there, you just got to make sure whatever's right for your vehicle and whatever your budget is. So this is the mid-range sort of uh, oil, um, not too bad considering we're going to be doing a flush, so we're going to waste a lot of this oil in just flushing it through. Alright, you just got to make sure that it's specified for Toyota and as you can see here it says Toyota WS which means world standard, which is what these uh, 200 series take, I think the 100 series takes them as well. But yeah, just make sure you just check your manufacturer's handbook telling you which is the best oil for it. But this is the one that I'm using today, so we'll get into it. Dumbass. Dumbass. Alright, first step, remove the bash plates. Alright, so the bash plate's off. Now, this is the transmission pan here. Underneath the vehicle. You'll need to know a few things. This is the fill plug on the passenger side, just next to the drive shaft here. 24 mil head. Then we've got the drain bung. 14 mil. And then the level set bung. So this is what you, you take out to get the correct level once you're finished at the end. So that's a, I think it's a four mil Allen key. So they're the three main plugs that we need to know when we're doing this transmission. Now I'm also gonna be doing the filter, which means we're gonna to have to take all these pan bolts off as well. And we're gonna drop this pan out and change the filter. But if you're just gonna do a flush, you don't need to do that, but I feel you might as well. It's like having a shower and putting your old dirty undies back on. You might as well change the filter out. All right, the other thing we'll need to know is these cooler lines. So these two hoses here coming off on the driver's side, uh, your cool, uh, go off to your cooler. So the bottom one is a feed and the top one is the return. So just remember that for future, we're gonna to have to take this off when we're flushing it out. So those two cooler lines right next to your exhaust here. All right, so we'll get our 14 mil. And we're gonna just crack this drain bung. We 
with our pan ready to catch the oil. There you go, oil colour's not too bad considering the amount of effort we give this car. Alright, so the other thing I've got to make it a bit easier is a 12 volt pump. Um, that way I don't have to sit there and hand pump all the oil in so I can just uh, transfer it pretty much with this as I'm doing it on the ground, which makes it a bit harder. If you're on a hoist, obviously you're in a workshop, it'd be easy with a drum pump and things like that. But anyway, so I've just got this, it's an old one laying around. Uh, it's just a water pump, but I'm just going to use it to, with a bit of oil, doesn't matter if it dies or not. Anyway, a bit of uh, 10 mil clear hose, it's just water hose, just from Bunnings. So I'm just going to pump the new oil in through here and then up and into the gearbox. Alright, so that, most of that oil's drained out. Just going to put the plug back in and just tighten it up just gently. And then we're going to crack the fill port and fill up about the same amount that we've taken out. Now we're going to do this obviously because I don't want to put a new filter in here and then flush all the old oil through it. So we're going to do the flush first and then take the pan off change the filter out, put the filter back in, pan back on, and then top it up to the proper level. So I'm doing the flush before I do the filter. So I'm just gonna crack this fill plug here. And that's where we're gonna fill up our transmission oil. All right, so we've removed the tube and the oil. Now we're just uh, gonna tighten this back up. We're gonna run the car and we're gonna flush this oil out. So we'll head over to the other side to where the coolant lines are, or where the um, cooler lines are, sorry. And we'll disconnect one of the cooler lines and so we can flush out this new oil. All right, so these are the two lines we're talking about here. So we have to get the, this top one here. So not the bottom one, the top one. And we're gonna pull this rubber hose off and then we're going to get another bit of our 10 mil clear hose and we're going to put it onto the hard pipe on th this side, on the engine side, not on the transmission side. Alright, so as you can see here, that's the clear hose on our tube and then our other end that we took off is just sitting up there. Now nothing should come out of that. It only comes back through this tube here. And we've just tied it up out of the way so it's not going to hit on the exhaust because we're going to run the car right now. And then we're going to go out to we're going to out to a bucket. We're going to measure how much comes out. We only want to take out about one and a half litres and then we'll turn the car off. people this is what happens when you're doing it on your own got to be careful anyway so we'll fill this up the car's just running you go through the gears if you have another person helping you but at the moment we'll just fill it up to about now anyway we'll turn the car off Well, that was a bit of a boo-boo, but that just shows you that this can happen when you're doing it on your own, especially trying to record everything as well. So you just be careful. Obviously, if you've got someone else, it would be a great hand to go through the gears and things like that. But anyway, we'll keep going. We're gonna fill up the transmission again in that same side plug, uh, the same amount of oil that we just took out. So we took out about a litre and a half, so we're gonna put back a litre and a half. And we're gonna keep doing this a few times just until the oil that's coming out is a lot cleaner, like new oil. So we'll just do that a few more times.
monkey feet. So just gonna go through the gears a few times. Until we get to our two litre mark, which is pretty much now. All right, so that last pump there, I've done two liters out and I'm not gonna refill it because I'm now gonna drain the pan and take the pan off so we can do a service on it. So we've just gotta remember that we're down two liters and then I'm just gonna measure whatever comes out of this pan at the moment and then we can add those together and then we know we've gotta put that much back in. So I'll just drain the pan right now. All right, so while that's draining, I'm gonna go over the other side and disconnect that flush line that we took off and put the original uh, cooler return line back on. So that's good to go. All right, so we've drained out two liters out of the pan, plus the two liters we pumped out. So if my maths is correct, um, four. We've gotta put four liters back in once we're done. Always good to remember your numbers. All right, so that has been drained, the pan's been drained. We've got the side bung up, just nipped up tight. We're gonna have to fill that back up later on. And now we've got 12, uh, 12 mil bolts, or 12 mil headed bolts that we've got to take out. And we can pull this pan down. Now ideally there shouldn't be any oil in here, but there always is. So pretty much what you need to do is work your way around and so it like drops down and then you can catch it all so you're not trying to pull the pan off in one hit. So pretty much just loosen these ones at the back and then we'll take all these out and then this pan should hopefully just fall down like that and then we can catch the oil, whatever oil comes out and then we can just drop it off. Saves all the splashing around. So they're all loosened off except for the two at the back. I've just got them just backed off a little bit. So I'll just get my flat blade screwdriver in here. And just give it a little pry. Yep, and nothing's happened. Boom. All right, so we've got the pan out now. Um, it's a good time to have a bit of a look and see if there's any metal flakes or any chunks or anything like that in there. Um, all looks pretty good, actually which is a promising sign. The oil wasn't too bad, so anyway, we'll get a new gasket on here and we'll go up and we'll change the filter out. All right, so I've drained the oil out of the pan and these are the little magnetic pickups here that um, get all the, all the gunk and bits of clutch pack and things like that that you're gonna chew through and that's all I've got, tiniest amount. Otherwise the pan is clean, so that's a good sign. This is what I think is a result of not flogging your transmission when you're towing, making sure you choose the right gear, and also having a trans tune is also a good thing because it optimizes your transmission. But anyway, I'm just speculating there. But anyway, good condition transmission, good condition oil, treat your cars right. All right, so there's the guts of your transmission. You got the valve body and all the solenoids on here. Um, then this is your filter here. Now, before you start pulling things apart, always good to check the filter you've got is the correct one. Um, I've checked the gasket and it looks pretty good. Uh, looks like the same thing. So I'm just gonna double check this filter, make sure it's all good. And if it is, we can pop the filter off. Yep, so it's the right one. We've just got four 10 mil bolts here to pop off. And then this filter should come out. All right, so we've got the old filter out that just pops out. You just gotta be careful when you pull it out because there will be excess oil coming out, so make sure you've got a tray underneath to catch all that. Now, what happened with this one is the O-ring that goes onto the spout, that goes into the um, transmission, that got stuck behind. So make sure when you pull it out, you pull that O-ring out as well, otherwise you'll have some dramas when you put the next one in because the next one, the new one here, comes with an O-ring on there. So if you double up your O-rings, you're gonna get run into some troubles. So O-rings out, 
it is the right filter which is good and if we have a bit of a look there and you can see sort of it's not too bad in there but there's definitely some it's just gunk in there just like just like the pan so it's definitely done its job time for a new one so this is the replacement one here nice and clean lubricate this o-ring up with a bit of oil which is pretty much all over my hands anyway so no wonder why the internet mechanics wear gloves all the time but I don't know, never have and I've got beautiful soft skin not really anyway we'll chuck that in make sure this is all lubed up pop it in until it clicks in nice and tight and then we'll do those four screws up change the pan gasket out with the new one we've got here and then we're good to go so the parts I'm using are a Transgold transmission filter kit um, part number is there KFS1093 so this is for a 2016 2000, uh, 2016 200 series Land Cruiser with the 6 speed automatic transmission so that's where the filter spout comes out of and the four bolts that were holding it in and then it just popped out and then yeah a bit of excess oil come out of there now so I'll just pop the new one in pop the four bolts in give this gasket surface area a bit of a clean up with a bit of contact cleaner or carby cleaner new gasket on the pan and then we'll pop the pan back on so I'm putting the new gasket on and they don't come with the little bushes the little crush washers tubes we've got here so just have to pop them out they just pop out and then you just slide them in make sure you do that otherwise this will just crush and it won't work properly so you've got to change all those out Alright, so the pan's back on, everything's all snugged up nice and tight, clean. We'll just fill up this uh, four litres that we had to transfer across. So I've got a new one, we've still got about one, oh, about another half left of another one. So we'll get up the temp and we check the level. If we need more, we can. Anyway, so we'll pump this up now. All right, so we've gone for a test drive. We've gone through all the gears and everything seems to be working fine, which is good. Uh, no leaks or anything like that, but now we've got to check the oil level. So what we've got to do is got to get the transmission temperature, which is this one here, to between 42 and 46 degrees. So right now it's at 43, which is good. Uh, and then we can check the oil level. It's at the right temperature for the right consistency and viscosity and all that sort of jazz. So if you haven't got one of these ultra gauges, um, just take it for a strap around the block, pretty much. Just get it so it's up to temperature on your engine side and you should be all good for your transmission side. But I'm pretty sure there's a way of doing it with the, um, the OBD2 sensor and you get two wires and you plug them in, but I don't know how to do that because I have this, so I don't need to. Anyway, sitting at 44, which is good. I'll jump outside now and we'll check the level. So it was a little bit low, it didn't come out of that drain plug or that um, checkpoint. So I'm just gonna chuck another half a litre to a litre in it and then we'll take it back up to temp again and recheck it. Right, there you go so topped up the levels i've taken it for a drive double checked it everything's all tight nothing's leaking and yeah the level's spot on shifts gears beautifully so yeah really good so i'm happy with that and uh yeah it should be good for another hundred thousand k's hopefully uh so if you like that thanks for uh, watching and make sure to like subscribe share 
And stay tuned because we're going to be installing a trans cooler to this soon. Uh, so that will help us with our towing uh, and also when we do four wheel driving and things like that, the trans temps sort of get up a bit higher. So hopefully that'll help it out. But yeah, so stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up in a future episode. But yeah, anyway, take care. We'll see you next time.